This next set of videos will take you through procedures to solve rational inequalities, but I'd like to start by looking at the rational function 1 over x. Basically, an inequality is greater than or less than 0. So if we look at this, this rational function is less than 0 below the x-axis for any value of x less than 0. And it's above the x-axis or positive for any value of x greater than 0. Since this is a vertical asymptote, we're not really sure what it's doing there. So we don't include x equals 0 in the solution. So if we take a look, 1 over x is equal to 0. Never. It never crosses the x-axis. So the solution to this equation doesn't exist. But 1 over x is less than 0, meaning where is it negative? It's negative from negative infinity up to 0. x is greater than negative infinity, but x is less than 0. And where is it positive? Where is 1 over x greater than 0? From x is greater than 0, but less than positive infinity. Now, if we look at this one, 1 over x squared, this is the graph. Well, essentially, this graph is above the x-axis everywhere. But again, we're not sure what's happening at the vertical asymptote, so we don't include it. So if we look, where is this graph equal to 0? It never touches so the x-axis, so that does not exist. Where is the graph less than 0? It's never below the x-axis, so that's another no solution. And where is the graph of 1 over x squared greater than 0? Pretty much everywhere in its domain, but um, x equals 0 is not defined, so we have to split it. x is greater than negative infinity, but less than 0, in union with x is greater than 0, but less than positive infinity. Now, when we start to solve the actual inequalities, a sign chart is going to be very beneficial to us to help us pinpoint where the um, inequality is greater than or less than zero. The way that this works is to set up your sign chart, you set the numerator of your rational inequality equal to zero. And if you were graphing, these would be the x-intercepts, but you place them on your sign chart. And you also set the denominator equal to zero. These will be the vertical asymptote values. And all those values can have a sign change or a positive to negative, negative to positive um, situation. So they're the things that go on the sign chart. So if we take a look at this inequality, we have an x-intercept for the numerator, x equals negative 1, and we would have had a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 because this is not defined for x equals 2. We want to know where this is greater than or equal to 0, meaning um, where it's 0 or positive. And we remember x can't be 2 from here. The numerator would be x equals negative 1. So these two will go on our sign chart. Remember, solutions to this inequality are values that make this ratio positive or zero. So if we put those two numbers, negative one and um, positive two, on the sign chart, we pick values in the intervals that these divide my number line up into and test them. When we plug negative two up in here, and do the arithmetic, we get a positive value. When we plug 0 in here for x, we get a negative value. And when we plug 3 in, which is bigger than 2, we get a positive. So we're looking for areas that give us positives. So it would be x is less than or equal to negative 1. But x is just greater than 2 because x can't be equal to 2. So we have to be careful how we write that. Uh, oh, that should be... Well, a bit of magic. This was a misprint. This should have said negative 1. x is less than or equal to negative 1, any value. And I'm including negative 1 because the original inequality says greater than or equal to 0. And when you plug negative 1 in here, you get 0. In union with x is just greater than 2 because we can't include 2 because we get an undefined situation here. 
This third inequality is a little more complicated and involves one more step. If we have a polynomial over a polynomial, many times you'll have to factor the polynomial in order to find and solve totally. The first thing, denominator can't be zero. So we're eliminating negative four from our possible solutions. And since it says less than or equal to zero, it's negative as well as equal to zero. So we can factor the numerator. So now we have x minus seven times x minus three over x plus four. The um, solutions for the x-intercepts or the solutions to the numerator would be seven and three. Um, so again, remember, we're looking for values that would make this whole um, ratio a negative number. So we create our sign chart here. So x equals negative four is our undefined value. That goes on the sign chart. x equals positive three is our one solution for the numerator. And x equals seven is our other solution for the numerator. So um, we test values in the intervals that these divide up. So I picked negative five for less than negative four. Zero is a great one to test. Then four is between three and seven and eight. So if I plug them in, to my factored inequality, usually it's easier to check in the factored. If I plug negative five in here, I get three negatives. They multiply slash divide out to a negative. If I plug zero in, I get a negative, negative over a positive, multiply to a positive. If I plug four in, I get a negative, positive, positive, which is a negative. And then if I plug eight in, I get positives all around. We're looking for negative values, so we have two intervals, anything smaller than negative four, not including because of this, and anything between three and seven, including both. Now, if we write that out algebraically, it's everything less than negative four and everything between three and seven, including both. So it will be x is less than negative four, everything smaller than negative four, in union with x is greater than or equal to 3, but less than or equal to 7. That will be the solution to that inequality. Now this final one in the...